Hello guys so today we are going to start the another topic of the general anatomy that is the skull so the vault is the upper part of the cranium and the base of the skull is the lowest part of the cranium so the vault is the upper part of the skull and the lower part of the skull is cranium so basically skull composed of 22 bones in which eight of these bones are formed the cranium that is the neurocranium which contains the brain and the meninges and 14 of these forms the face of forms the face okay that is viscerocranium so what is neurocranium neurocranium is also known as your brain case neurocranium is also known as your brain case and brain span so neurocranium is also known as brain case and brain pan so brain pan is the upper and the back part of the skull which forms a protective case around the brain that is why it is known as brain pan so neurocranium includes the calvaria that is the skull cap this is the calvaria that is the skull cap so cranium consists as you all know that cranium consists of your eight bones that is frontal one frontal bone two parietal bones one occipital bone uh, two temporal bones and uh, one sphenoid bone and one ethmoid bone so this is the frontal bone your parietal bone it is a square shape the, your temporal bone your occipital sphenoidal so it's sphenoid bone and ethmoid bone these eight are your cranium bones so facial bones as you all know 14 facial bones that is zygomatic bones two are zygomatic bones two are maxillae and uh, two are nasal bone two are lacrimal bone one is vomer two are palatine bones two in inferior concave and one is mandible so the skull bones are made up of external and the internal tables of the compact bone this is the periosteum these are the compact bone these are the compact bone in which which are separated by a layer a dense layer of a spongy bone which is known as diplo this is known as diplo it is basically present between the compact bone or you can say it is separated the layer of two compact bone or you can say the two layers of the compact bone is separated by the spongy bone that is the diplo so the internal table is so this the internal table is more thinner and more brittle than the external table and the bones are covered in this are your inner and the outer surface with the periosteum now starting with the cranium part cranium part So it contains the frontal and the paranasal sinuses. It has the two primary centers that ossify along the frontal suture that, the, that is metopic in the second ear. So it contains your frontal sinus. Can you see this? This is the frontal sinus. So Your frontal bone it helps form the foramen cecum, which allows the passage. This is the foramen cecum. This part is your frontal bone, and in this, this is the foramen cecum. It allows the pa passage of all the emissionary veins which connect the sagittal sinus. So the all, uh, so the part of the frontal bone are in see this is very important point that all parts of the frontal bones are of intramembranous ossification so it undergoes in your frontal bone undergoes intramembranous ossification so the frontal bone is you can say the frontal it has three parts that is your squamous portion your orbital portion and your nasal portion starting with the squamous portion it is the largest part 
of the frontal bone which form the majority of the forehead hair okay so it form the supra orbital margin this is this is the supra orbital margin and the superciliary arch this is the superciliary arch so zyg uh, the zygomatic process of the frontal bone extends from the posterior part of the supra orbital margin so from here so from here your zygomatic process of the frontal bone extends can you see this 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 is the supra orbital margin so your zygomatic process is extend from the posterior part of your supra orbital margin so arachnoid fovea so arachnoid fovea is your depression these are these are the depressions can you see this depression these depressions these are the depressions it is caused by arachnoid granulation see this is very important line these are the depression which caused by the arachnoid granulations that push on the dura mater and it causes the bone resorption on the endocranial surfaces okay these are the depressions can you see this these are, these are the depression which caused by the arachnoid granulation coming on to the orbital portion orbital portion it forms the roof of the orbit and the floor of the anterior cranial fossa the trochlea of the orbit articulates with the orbital portion coming on to the nasal portion this is the nasal portion so it articulates with the nasal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla this is the nasal bone and it also articulates with the frontal process of the maxilla to form the root of the nose see this is the trochlea of the orbit this is the superior oblique so your orbital portion it forms the roof uh, roof of the orbit and the floor of the anterior cranial fossa and your nasal portion it articulates with the nasal process uh, sorry nasal bones and the frontal process of the maxilla to form the uh, root of the nose coming on to the parietal bone see this is your frontal bone this is your parietal bone it is a square in shape it has the four corners okay it is square in shape this is your occipital bone this is your temporal bone okay so it is it forms the major part of your cranial vault and the uh, muscle which attaches is the temporalis muscle so basically it has the four corners and these are not ossified at the time of the birth and it gives rise to fontanelles it gives rise to fontanelles so there are two types of uh, there are two parietal bone so as i have already told you that this is square in shape forming the roof of roof and the side of the cranial vault and the endocranial endocranial surface is filled with the grooves these are the grooves and the endocranial surface is filled with the grooves which is made by the branches of middle meningeal artery see this is the inferior view this is your frontal bone this is the squarish portion is your parietal bone okay this is your granular this is your sagittal suture this is lambdoid suture here is your lambda this is your occipital bone same way frontal bone this is your bregma sagittal sutures 
your parietal foramen over here, your lambda and lambdoid sutures and occipital bone. See, these are the grooves for the branches of the middle meningeal vessels. Very important. This is the frontal suture, this is the frontal bone as you all know and this is the parietal bone, this is the occipital bone. So this is the ossification center, this is the anterior fontanel and this is the posterior fontanel. Yeah, this is the sigmoid circle, this one, this is the sigmoid circle. So it is a groove which is caused by the beginning of your transverse sinus. This is your transverse sinus which is located in the mastoid process mastoid angle this is the sigmoid sulcus so in this the, all the four parts undergo the intramembranous ossification very important so basically it has the four angles one is the frontal which is located in the bragma second is your sphenoid which is located at the tire uh, tyrant Tyrion and uh, and uh, this one okay third one is your occipital which is located at the lambda and your mastoid which is located at asterion asterion or you can see asterion okay so basically you have four angles the bregma see the bregma okay the tyrion tyrion is over here see this is the tyrion okay and your lambda and asterion so it has four angles coming to the occipital bone it forms the posterior see this is the occipital bone this is the frontal bone squarish shape a uh, parietal bone and this is the occipital bone so in this it forms the as you all know it forms the posterior part of the cranial wart it articulates with the atlas so the squamous and the lateral portion these are the squamous see these are the squamous sutures these are the squamous area the squamous and the lateral portion normally ossifies together these both portions the squamous portion and the lateral portion these both ossify together by the year by four years of age okay so the uh, basilar portion unites to this section at six year So there is one occipital bone. The squamous portion has the intramembranous ossification while the other parts has the endochondrial ossification. It is very important. So the first part is the first part is your squamous portion. It articulates see, it articulates with the temporal and the parietal bone. The largest portion is the occipital bone and located posteriorly and superiorly to the foramen magnum. This is the foramen magnum. It has the external protuberance more pronounced in males. Very important. See, this is the external protuberance. It is very prominent in males. So the uh, so it has the superior and the inferior nuchal lines see this this is the inferior nuchal line and this is the superior nuchal line and this is your external occipital protuberance which is prominent in the males very important it has the external occipital protuberance which is more pronounced in the males and it has the superior and the inferior nuchal lines so it has the grooves on the internal surfaces surface of the three of the sinus forming the confluence of the sinuses that is 
the superior sagittal and the right and left transverse sinuses see this is the transverse sinus okay this portion this is the groove for the transverse sinus superior to this is the right and left transverse sinuses so the depression superior to the transverse sinus is the occipital lobes of the brain and the depression see this is the depression and the depression inferior to the transverse sinus is for the cerebellum this is the cerebral fossa cerebellar fossa coming on to the lateral portion it is very important it basically articulates so with the temporal bone so in this it is lateral to the foramen magnum and the occipital condyles form or you can say articulate with the atlas and it contains the hypoglossal canal okay and it forms the major portion of the jugular foramen this is the jugular foramen this is the foramen magnum foramen magnum this is the jugular foramen it forms the major portion of the jugular foramen so next is the basal portion it articulates with the petrous part of the temporal and the sphenoid bone these are the petrous part of the temporal bone okay so it is the portion immediately anterior see it is the portion immediately anterior to your foramen magnum and the pharyngeal tubercle this is the pharyngeal tubercle can you see this over here pharyngeal tubercle is a part of the basilar portion that provides the attachment for the superior constrictor muscle so what is the function of the pharyngeal tubercle It's, it was there in your aipg exam what what is the use of the pharyngeal tubercle it provides the attachment for the superior constrictor muscle so clevis so it is the internal surface of the basilar portion and it is known as clevis and the part of the brain stem it lies against it now coming on to the temporal bone this is the temporal bone so this is your frontal bone your square shape which cover the major portion of your skull is the parietal bone this is the occipital bone and this is the temporal bone so it basically it helps in forming the base of the skull and the lateral wall of the skull so it houses the auditory and the vestibular apparatuses it contains very important it contains the mastoid air cell very important so if each bone has the eight centers of ossification that give rise to the three major center observed before birth there are two temporal bones coming on to the part temporal bone are having the four portion that is the squamous portion uh, position sorry portion and your petrous portion tympanic portion and the styloid portion so squamous part intramembranous or ossification takes place it is the largest portion of the bone and the three portion of the squamous part number 1 is the temporal the temporal bone is the thin and the large see this one the temporal bone is thin and the large on the squamous part of the temporal on the internal surface the temporal portion lies groove for the middle meningeal artery very important now coming on to the zygomatic processes the zygomatic processes it, it extends anteriorly and laterally anteriorly and laterally from the squamous portion this is the squamous portion from the squamous portion and it articulates with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone to make the zygomatic arch and the glenoid fossa it is the inferior this is the articular fossa you can see the glenoid fossa this one 
The glenoid fossa it is inferior and medial to the zygomatic process and it articulates with the mandibular condyle. Mandibular condyle and forming the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint over here. Next is the petrous parts. It goes endochondrial ossification. It forms this 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 part is known as the petrous part. This one. So it forms the solid portion of the bone. In this, the auditory and the vestibular apparatuses are located within the petrous part. Very important. It helps separate the temporal bone and the occipital lobes. So it extends anterior, anteriorly and medially. The medial part articulates with the foramen lacerum. This is the foramen lacerum. This one. So the medial part articulates with the sphenoid bone. This is the sphenoid bone to form the foramen lacerum. Internal acoustic meatus is observed on the medial side of the petrous part. So, carotid canal lies on the inferior. This is the petrous part and the carotid canal it lies to the inferior part of the petrous part. So, petrotrympanic fissure it lies between the petrous part this one it lies between the petrous part of the temporal bone and the tympanic part of the temporal bone this is the petrotympanic fissure so on the medial portion of the petrous part it lies the grooves which gives rise to your this one is the inferior petrosal sinus and this is the superior petrosal sinuses and on th this one and on the posterior part it lies the jugular foramen the posterior inferior surfaces of the petrous part lies here is the jugular fossa so jugular fossa not the foramen it is the jugular fossa So it is the inferior aspect of the skull. This is the hard palate, the mandibular fossa, mastoid process. This is the foramen magnum. This is the superior nuchal line. And this is the occipital condyle, styloid process, carotid canal, foramen lacerum, foramen spinosum, foramen ovale, zygomatic bone, zygomatic process of the temporal bone. See, between the jugular fossa and the carotid canal, there is a tympanic canaliculus. See, this is the carotid canal and this is the jugular fossa. This is the jugular fossa and this is the carotid canal. In between of them, there is a tympanic canaliculus and the mastoid process extend posteriorly. This is your mastoid process it extends posteriorly and has the large mastoid air cells so your mastoid process contains large number of mastoid air cells coming on to the tympanic part it is intramembrous or ossification will take place so tympanic this is it is a plate of a bone that is forming the anterior and the posterior and the inferior portions of the internal acoustic meter see it is very important terminologies and very important part so anterior part forms the in this the anterior part forms the portion of the portion with the glenoid fossa which which helps in the your temporomandibular joint Next is the styloid process. Endochondrial ossification takes place and this is your styloid process. It is a projection from the temporal bone, the styromastoid foramen. This is the styromastoid foramen. Lies posterior to this process. This is your styloid process and your styromastoid foramen, it lies posterior to the styromastoid process. next bone is the sphenoid bone can you see this this is the wing like bone 
This is known as sphenoid bone. So it forms a majority of the middle portion of the cranial piece. And it forms the majority of the middle cranial fossa. So it contains the sphenoid paranasal. So paranasal sinus is present in the sphenoid bone. So there is only one sphenoid bone. See, number one, sphenoid bone, it has the four portion that is the body, the greater wing, the lesser wing and the pterygoid process. Starting with the body, endochondrial ossification takes place. This is the center of sphenoid and the anterior portion of the body helps in forming the roof of the nasal cavity. Anterior portion, this is the posterior portion, the anterior portion. So, um, the anterior portion, okay. So, the superior portion, this is the cella tercica, this is the major part of this. So, this is the superior part of the body which is known as the uh, cella tercica. This is saddle in shape. Can you see the con uh, concavity and the convexity? This is saddle like. She. Okay. And this is okay. Hypo uh, this and in this somewhere around here, the hypophyseal fossa, the deepest portion somewhere around here, the deepest part of the cella tercica houses the pituitary gland. Somewhere here, you can see the hypophyseal fossa. It is the most deep, deepest part of the cella tercica. And this is the dorsum cellae, uh, dorsum cella, and it is the more square, you can say, more square shape part of the bone, and it uh, forms the posterior part of the cella tercica. Okay, so clevis, as I've already told you, clevis around here, this is. Clevis is the portion that slope, slopes the posterior to the body and the body contains the sphenoid in this as I have already told you that it contains the sphenoid paranasal sinuses. So the lateral portion of the body is covered by cavernous sinus. And the optic canal, this is the optic canal. Can you see this? This optic canal is found in the body of the sphenoid. So basically the body it goes endochondrial ossification okay it is saddle like and the major portion is the cellar tercica and the hypophyseal fossa it is found in the most deepest part of the cellar tercica and uh, dorsum cellar it is this most squarish part of the uh, your uh, most uh, squarish part of the cellar tercica and it, it is lies posteriorly to the cellar tercica and the hypophyseal fossa it houses the pituitary gland over here Okay, so this is the optic canal which is found in the body of the sphenoid. Now coming on to the greater wing, these are the greater wing of the sphenoid and uh, the ossification type is the endochondrial, both the endochondrial and the intramembranous ossification. So it extends anteriorly and anteriorly and laterally from the posterior portion of the body of the sphenoid. That is why it is wing like. So endocranial portion will help forming the large part of the middle cranial fossa as I have already told you. So it contains three types of foramen that is foramen. Mm -hmm. That is foramen spinosum this one which is the widest foramen ovale and the jugular foramen. It contains three types of foramen. Foramen oak ovale for uh, sorry foramen uh, spinosum rotundum and ovale foramen spinosum foramen ovale and uh, foramen rotundum I'll show you foramen rotundum also see this is the foramen rotundum foramen ovale rotundum and spinosum very important that the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, bone contains the three foramen that is the foramen spinosum, foramen rotundum and foramen ovale. Coming on to the lesser wing, it is endochondrial ossification. See the greater wing 
comprises of both the ossification that is the endochondrial and the intramembranous and while the lesser wing it undergoes only the endochondrial ossification so it extends it extends anteriorly and laterally can you see this it extends laterally oh, sorry anteriorly and laterally and it is uh, separated by the greater wings of sphenoid the body is separated by the greater wings of sphenoid now coming on to a pterygoid process the type of ossification is intramembranous it arises from the inferior surfaces of the body there are two types of pterygoid process the lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid this is the lateral pterygoid and this is the medial pterygoid okay so pterygoid see this is the pterygoid hamulus which extends from the this is the medial pterygoid the uh, uh, pterygoid hamulus it extends from the pterygoid medial pterygoid and the two canals which are associated with the pterygoid process is the pterygoid canal and uh, pharyngeal canal see this is the pterygoid canal this one this is the pterygoid canal and this is the palato vaginal canal can you see this this one this is the palato vaginal canal and this is your pterygoid canal so before starting with the ethmoid or bone let me tell you some let me brief you sphenoid bone see sphenoid bone it forms a major part of your middle cranial fossa it is winged like so body consists of endochondrial ossification so it has a larger body that is known as cella turcica the shape of the cella turcica is of your uh, what we can say is the saddle shape which is concavity concavity and the convexity okay so the hypophyseal fossa it lies in the deepest portion of the cella turcica and the dorsum cella it is like uh, it is lies in the posterior part of the cella turcica and it is the most squarish portion and in this we can op we can see an optic canal this is the optic canal in the body we see the optic canal and clavus and the body of the uh, your uh, sphenoid also contains the paranasal sinuses coming on to the greater wing of sphenoid uh, sorry greater wing of sphenoid this is the wings like okay this extend your anteriorly and laterally and it contains three types of fossa that is foramen spinosum rotundum and ovale lesser wing of sphenoid it can so it extends anteriorly and laterally okay so the body is distinguished or you can say it is separated by the greater wing of sphenoid so in this the ossification takes place as endochondrial ossification coming on to the pterygoid process the in this the intramembranous ossification takes place it forms the inferior part and it has the uh, lateral uh, pterygoid plate and the medial pterygoid plate it is having the hamulus pterygoid which extends from the medial pterygoid plate so it contains two canal that is the pterygoid canal and the palato vaginal canal okay. the important point commonly asked mcq is type of canal found in the pterygoid processes of sphenoid and Uh, your foramen found in the greater wing of sphenoid very important sphenoid bone is very important for the exam point of view so now coming on to the ethmoid bone it is a porous bone that forms a major portion of the middle part of the face between the orbits these are the orbits it forms the middle part of the face it helps to form the orbit nasal cavity see it helps to form the orbit these are the orbit the nasal cavity the septum and anterior cranial fossa there is one ethmoid bone parts are number 1 this is the perpendicular plate it is a flat plate which extends from the cribriform plate to form the part of the nasal septum 
so it is a perpendicular plate it articulates with the vomer this is the vomer this is the vomer it's a pyramidal shape this is the vomer with the vomer inferiorly so cribriform plate a horizontal bone that forming the superior surface of the ethmoid and contain the numerous foramina for the olfactory nerve so basic function is olfactory nerve crystalli this these are the this one this is the crystalli can you see this this portion is known as crystalli so it is uh, the uh, crystalli it is a vertical plate that extend from superiorly from the cribriform plate providing the attachment of the felts cerebri of the meninges so a small foramen is associated with it this foramen cecum foramen cecum is associated with your cribriform plate or you can say the crystalli it is very important question for your exam point of view coming on to the ethmoid labyrinth it is the largest portion of the ethmoid bone this is the crystalli okay it uh, descends inferiorly from the cribriform plate this is the cribriform plate and the ethmoid paraneal sinuses are located within the ethmoid labyrinth and the ethmoid labyrinth forms two major structure with the nasal cavity that is the sup this one the superior nasal concha and the middle nasal concha okay the two major structure which are formed with the uh, ethmoid labyrinth is the superior nasal concha and uh, superior nasal concha and middle nasal concha this is the middle nasal concha and this is the superior nasal concha so ethmoid bulla is a large elevation this is can you see this this is the large this is the ethmoid bulla is large elevation of the bone located in the middle of the ethmoid paranasal sinuses so this is the ethmoidal bulla so this is the uncinate process can you see this this is a curve like portion this is a curve portion of the curve piece like portion of the bone and between the uncinate process and the ethmoid bulla we have your semilunar hiatus of or you can say hiatus semilunaris this is the with the opening so an important mcq is between the ethmoidal bulla number 1 and the unis uh, uh, and the uh, sorry and the uncinate process we can see the hiatus semilunaris this portion this is the curved portion the unis the uncinate process is the your curved bone and it is forming the major portion which is the ethmoid bulla and between this we get hiatus semilunaris important question for your exam point of view see this is all about your bones okay now coming on to the facial bones as you all know there are 14 bones number 1 starting with the zygomatic bone it is also known as zygoma and it forms the majority of the skeleton and it forms the cheek it forms the majority it forms the skeleton of the cheek it provides attachment to the masseter muscle this is the masseter muscle it forms the three foramina again very important number 1 is the zygomatic orbital here it is this is this one this is zygomatic orbital foramen number 1 number second is zygomatic facial this foramen zygomatic facial foramen number 3 is zygomatic uh, zygomatic temporal foramen this is zygomatic temporal foramen so again important for your exam point of view for your mcq that zygomatic bone contains three types of foramen that is zygomatic orbital foramen zygomatic facial foramen zygomatic temporal foramen this is your zygomatic orbital foramen zygomatic facial foramen this is your zygomatic temporal foramen 
so all uh, parts are the intramembranes it undergoes intramembranes ossification frontal process it articulates and form the major portion of your this is the frontal process it is formed major portion of your orbit second is your temporal process it articulate with the zygomatic temporal process it articulate with the zygomatic process and forming the zygomatic arch okay third is the maxillary process it articulate with the zygomatic process and of the maxillary bone to help form the orbit c frontal process it helps in forming the wall of the orbit okay temporal process it forms the zygomatic arch the maxillary process along with the temporal process it forms the bone of the orbit next is the maxillary bones it forms a majority of skeleton of the face and the upper jaw contains the maxillary paranasal sinuses articulates with the opposite maxilla and the frontal sphenoidal nasal vomer ethmoid bones inferior concha palatine lacrimal and zygomatic bones and the septal and the nasal cartilages so basically there are two maxilla bones so it articulates with the or frontal bone nasal bone lacrimal this is the frontal bone your nasal bone this lacrimal bone zygomatic bone your sphenoid bone temporal bone ethmoid bone inferior nasal concha your vomer okay so parts all the parts of this are undergo intramembranous ossification so it has a body which forms a major part see this is triangular in shape or you can say pyramid in shape so body it forms the major portion and it is shaped like a pyramid it contains the maxillary paranasal sinuses and it give rise to four region that is the orbit here the nasal cavity over here and or some around here the infratemporal fossa and the face see here is the infratemporal fossa here some around here this is the infratemporal fossa okay so face intra or uh, intra orbital canal and the foramen passes from the orbit region to the face region the frontal process extends superiorly to articulate with the nasal frontal ethmoid and lacrimal bones this is the nasal ethmoidal and lacrimal bones this is the frontal process forms the anterior boundary of the lacrimal fossa zygomatic process it extends laterally to articulate with the maxillary with the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone it articulates with the maxillary process of zygomatic bone coming on to the palatine processes it extends this is the palatine process it extend more medially of the hard palate okay it articulates with the palatine process of the opposite side and here you can find the incisive foramen which is located in the anterior portion of the hard palate so these are the alveolar processes it forms as you all know the part of the maxilla supports all the maxillary teeth it extends inferiorly from the maxilla it contains five primary and eight permanent teeth so alveolar bone is resolved or resist when a tooth is lost see this is a diagram in which the nasal septum is removed so this is the frontal bone this is the frontal sinuses 
this is your ethmoid bone this is your nasal bone the maxillary process the maxilla or the hard palate this is the sphenoidal sinus this is the sphenoid bone this is your superior nasal concha this is your middle nasal concha and this is your inferior nasal concha and this is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone next is the nasal bone so particularly this bone it is the inferior portion which forms the superior margin of the nasal aperture so it forms the bridge of the nose and it articulates with the nasal bone of the opposite side and the nasal portion of the frontal bone so it has a perpendicular plate this one is the perpendicular plate and you have the nasal bone the upper lateral cartilage and the lower lateral cartilage okay so type of ossification is intramembranous ossification coming on to the lacrimal bone lacrimal bone it is a small and it is a small and the rectangular shape so it articulates see it articulates with the frontal bone it articulates with the frontal process of the see this one it articulates with the frontal process of the maxilla okay this one and the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone this is the ethmoid bone first of all it articulates with the frontal process of the maxilla then the ethmoid bone and then the inferior nasal concha okay so the region that articulates with the frontal process of the maxilla forms the lacrimal fossa in this the region that articulates with the frontal bone or oh, sorry the frontal process this is the frontal bone the portion which forms the region that articulates with the frontal process of the maxilla forms the lacrimal fossa and the location is the lacrimal sac the inf or the inferior part of the lacrimal forms the small portion of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and the type of ossification in this is intramembranous ossification coming on to the vomer so vomer there is one bone this is me this is the portion of the vomer this is the one bone and it is mostly it forms the posterior inferior part of your nasal septum and it articulates with your ethmoid bone with your this one is your maxilla see this is the ethmoid bone it entangles with the ethmoid bones or articulates with the ethmoid bone the maxillary so the maxilla the palatine and the sphenoid bone okay and the septal cartilage this is the septal cartilage so the posterior border does not articulate with any bone and the type of ossification is the intramembranous ossification next is the palatine bones this is the palatine bone it forms the l shape so it is the l shape bone so in this the type of ossification takes place is the intramembranous ossification it is perpendicular plate it is in it is a vertical you can say a vertical rectangle and in this you can see a sphenopalatine foramen over here yes so in this it is very important for the exam point of view it is very important for the exam point of view 
that they uh, the foramen which is associated with the palatine bone is the sphenopalatine foramen there is a small orbit processes orbital processes which helps to form a part of the orbit it forms a part of the wall of the pterygopalatine fossa this is the pterygopalatine fossa okay and laterally the wall of the nasal cavity and lateral wall articulates with the maxilla to form the palatine canal coming on to the horizontal plate this is the horizontal plate it forms the posterior part of the heart palate and uh, on the medial part it forms both the horizontal plane and is posterior nasal spine this is your posterior nasal spine somewhere around here this one here is your posterior nasal spine so greater palatine foramen is on the plate this is the greater palatine foramen coming on to the pyramidal process it extends posteriorly and inferiorly from the junction of the perpendicular and the horizontal plate of the palatine these are the pyramidal can you see this it extends from the posteriorly and inferiorly from the junction of the perpendicular and horizontal plates of palatine bone okay and it contains the lesser palatine foramen so your horizontal plate contains again an important point for your mcq that the horizontal plate contain the posterior nasal uh, your greater palatine foramen and the pyramidal process it contains the lesser palatine foramen i repeat your horizontal plate contain the greater palatine foramen and your pyramidal process it contain lesser palatine foramen so as you all know this is the pyramidal process it is the extension of your horizontal plate posteriorly coming on to the inferior nasal concha inferior nasal concha it is a curved bone can you see this it is a curved bone that forms a part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity it articulates with the maxilla and perpendicular plate of the palatine lacrimal and the ethmoid bone so it undergoes endochondrial ossification see ossifications are very important please do remember the type of ossification takes place in which bone so last is the mandible it forms the, as you all know it forms a lower jaw and it's a horseshoe a whole a horseshoe shaped to a bone and there is one mandible and uh, the muscle of mastication are get attached to the mandible can you see this this is the medial pterygoid and this is the lateral pterygoid muscles of mastication so it has a body which contains the mental foramen most important all the parts are of intramembranous ossification it ossify around the meckel's cartilage so mental foramen it lies see this one it lies on the anterior part of the lateral surface of the body this is the external oblique ridge it is observed on the lateral side of the mandibular and this is the mylohyoid ridge this is the mylohyoid line it is observed on the medial side of the body see on the lateral side you have the external oblique ridge or the uh, external oblique line okay and on the medial side you have the mylohyoid line so mylohyoid line this line it divides into the submandibular fossa and the sublingual fossa very important question for your exam uh, point of view and the posterior border of the mylohyoid line this one the posterior border in this the pterygomandibular refe are attached so in the midline at the midline what you have see is 
the digastric fossa and the mental spines so at the midline on the medial side superiorly and inferiorly the mental spines and the digastric fossa are present this is your midline and digastric fossa and mental spines are present here this one coming on to the ramus it meets see it meets the body at the angle of the mandible so this the mes uh, masseter muscle get attach this one the masseter muscle get attach okay the medial pterygoid muscle and sphenomandibular ligament also attach to the medial side in this the sphenomandibular ligament get attached okay and in this portion the medial pterygoid muscle gets attached i repeat the medial pterygoid mus muscle get attached here and your sphenomandibular ligament get attached here so there is a mandibular foramen you can see it is uh, it is located in the medial side of the ramus so the superior part as you all know it is divide this is the uh, mandibular notch which divides one part into coronoid process and one part into condylar process it helps in the tmj the condylar process coming on to the coronoid process it is the most anterior extension of the ramus okay in this the temporalis muscles gets attached to the coronoid process and to the uh, condylar process your lateral pterygoid muscle get attached please don't get confused that in coronoid process your temporalis muscle get attached and uh, your in your condylar process your lateral pterygoid muscles get attached okay so your condylar process helps in the tem uh, temporomandibular joint it has a neck this is the neck which forms the condyle that forms a condyle superiorly coming on to the alveolar processes it extends superiorly and it is created by a thick buccal and the lingual plate of bone the part of the mandible that supports the teeth so in this the mandible contains eight primary uh, sorry five primary and eight permanent teeth and it get resorbed when the tooth is lost so this is the pterygoid forebe Uh, so on this is the pterygoid for this one. This is the pterygoid forebe, and uh, this one is your mandibular foramen. This is your lingula. This is your mylohyoid groove. This line, this particular line, is the mylohyoid line. This portion is sublingual fossa. This portion is submandibular fossa. These are genial tubercles, and these are digastric fossa. Very important. Please go through it once. This is your symphysis menti. This is your mental protuberance. these are your mental tubercle this portion and this portion and these are your mental foramen so this is all about the skull please go through it thank you